Hello and thanks for joining us for our mid-morning edition of Adirang News. On this Monday morning, I'm Mark Broom. We start with the latest on the probe into the power abuse scandal surrounding the Park and Hay administration. The president's former senior secretary for civil affairs, U byung reportedly denied most of the allegations levelled against him on Sunday during a marathon 15-hour questioning session by prosecutors. Mr U left the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office before dawn on Monday morning. He reportedly remained tight-lipped regarding allegations. He embezzled funds from his family-owned company and that he was involved in the scandal surrounding President Park's longtime friend Chesson Shill. Also on Sunday, state prosecutors brought in the former senior presidential secretary for policy coordination, An Jong Bom, and former presidential secretary, Jong Ho Song, for further investigation after the court accepted prosecutors' request for arrest warrants for both those men. Anne and Jong are accused of helping Che collect money from conglomerates and giving her access to presidential documents, despite the fact she was a private citizen and had no security clearance. Now, seeking to resolve the situation and hopefully stabilize state affairs, President Park and Hay is going to seek some advice from senior religious leaders. At a daily briefing on Monday, the presidential office spokesperson said President Park will sit down with the leaders of Korea's Catholic and Protestant churches over the course of the day. She sat down with civic leaders and senior commissioners of the ruling Senudi party after her first public apology, garnering their opinions and their suggestions to try and handle the situation. Her new chief of staff and senior secretary for politics are also visiting the National Assembly today. They are going to meet with party leaders to arrange a face-to-face -face with President Park. The talks are expected to focus on clearing the way for her prime minister nominee and deciding on the level of power transfer from the president. Korea's rival parties are continuing to wrangle over how to deal with the ongoing crisis involving President Park's close friend and the president's former aides. Meeting this morning, the leader of the ruling Senudi party, Lee Jong-hyun, again refused to resign, asking party members to give him more time to deal with the sprawling corruption scandal. A non-pro-Park member of the party's Supreme Council stepped down earlier today in protest over Lee's unwillingness to go. The opposition parties are still demanding a thorough investigation by the prosecution into this scandal. They also vowed to continue demanding President Park step down, even suggesting they will start a campaign to oust her. The nominee to become Korea's new finance minister has vowed to watch the local financial market round the clock as the ministry shifts to emergency operation mode. Attending a hastily arranged meeting on Monday morning, Im jong Yong said such measures are necessary considering growing uncertainties at home and abroad, like the ongoing political scandal involving President Park and her longtime friend and the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. Im said he'll cooperate with related organizations like the Finance Ministry as well as the Bank of Korea and fend off any fallout by imposing an emergency contingency plan if need be. He added that he'll work to ensure market stabilization, especially in Korea's foreign exchange markets. And with the U.S. presidential election just around the corner. The head of the FBA, FBI rather, may have given Hillary Clinton a real boost, saying she will not face charges over her use of a private email server and the case is closed. Clinton's campaign team says it's glad the matter is resolved. Kim mok has more. In yet another bombshell letter to Congress, FBI Director James Comey said on Sunday that the Bureau had finished its review into the newly discovered emails and found nothing to change its original conclusion made in July. Back then, Comey concluded Clinton had been careless but not criminal in handling sensitive material on a private email server while she was Secretary of State. But as he announced last week that the new pertinent emails had been discovered, the issue flared up again and put Clinton's campaign on the defensive. Latest polls showed Clinton's lead dropped significantly after Comey's announcement last week. On Sunday, NBC News and The Wall Street Journal released the results of their final national poll, which found Clinton holding a modest lead over Donald Trump. The poll shows 44 percent of likely voters support Clinton, while 40 percent back Trump. 
Clinton's lead had tumbled by more than half the 11 point edge she enjoyed in a poll held in October and now was just slightly above the 2.7 percent margin of error. An ABC News Washington Post poll found similar results with Clinton ahead by five points, 48 to 43 percent. A political morning consult poll also reaffirmed a small but steady lead, showing the Democratic nominee with a three point lead at 45 percent to Trump's 42 percent. In that poll, Clinton's lead was within the plus or minus three percentage point margin of error. The polls were conducted during the first week of November. Kim Mogyan, Arirang News. A U.S.-backed alliance of Syrian rebels are attempting to retake the northern city of Raqqa, which is the de facto capital of the Islamic State group in Syria. Watchers say the new offensive, which started over the weekend, piles the pressure on ISIS at a critical time, with its fighters already battling Iraqi security forces in their remaining Iraqi stronghold in Mosul. The U.S. is coordinating airstrikes on Raqqa with the part Arab, part Kurdish alliance. The alliance says it's aiming to isolate and then topple the capital capital of international terrorism is how they put it. Raqqa is the last solid bastion of the Islamic State and is home to most of the terror group's training camps. And that's all the news we have for now. Our next bulletin is coming up at noon Korea time. So until then, goodbye.